What's up, everybody? Uh, happy Monday. Um, we're going to start off today uh, like we do at the beginning of every week. Uh, we're just going to look at the plan and then talk about specifically, uh, you know, what we're going to work on today. So uh, I put, I sent you guys a remote learning plan Friday, um, but then I updated it just because this Friday coming up to 25th, we, it's, we technically don't have school. So I didn't want to give you guys an assignment. So I just kind of condensed it uh, a little bit. We're still doing the same stuff, but um, you know, I, I just condensed one of the days. And cause I think the final copy of our narrative, I don't think it's going to take you guys too long. Um, you're most likely just tweaking things, that you, especially if you've been typing it. Um, so again, I'm going to updates and that is not what I wanted. Updates. There we go. Uh, scroll down. Here's our remote plan for the week. Again, pretty much everything we'll need is going to be here, uh, except for a couple things. Um, so yeah, no school Friday. So that day I just wiped it off, moved everything up. Um, so today <clears throat> we'll have video. Again, we'll talk about the week and um, talk about the personal narrative revision process. And there's a couple things that I saw, um, kind of common mistakes that I wanted to address today before you guys get started on your, uh, your final copy. Uh, your assignment, you can have someone at home revise your personal narrative, uh, but there's nothing that I need you guys to submit with that. I'm just going to trust that you're making those changes because the more changes you make and you know, the more you improve it, the, the better your grade is. So that should be some pretty good uh, motivation, right, to get that done. Um, if you don't have someone at home that can do it and, you, you know, if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, which, I mean, you could, you know, technically revise your own paper. I think it's always better to get uh, another set of eyes on it, though. Um, I'm going to have a Zoom meeting open up Monday morning and then another one Monday afternoon. So that way, if you guys want to get in, I can look at it with you. Um, we can talk about it together. Um, then the link for that, uh, here's a checklist. Um, kind of goes through everything. Tuesday, office hours, like always. Um, optional, you know, only if you got questions. And then begin typing your personal narrative draft and just finish that. Submit it to me by Wednesday. Okay. Uh, on Wednesday, <clears throat> we're gonna have a video uh, that just reviews a couple things because um, we're gonna be doing a, a what I consider kind of an assessment. Okay, so we'll talk about the types of conflict, um, plot, and just you know those are the big things that we've kind of covered thus far in the year. Um, and and there's gonna be this text called Born Worker, and we're gonna do um, some practice. With, with those skills based on that text. One of, it's a good story. I like it. Um, so you got the full text, um, the conflict part of the assessment. Do that and submit it. And then Thursday, um, this, is, this is tentative. This might have to change these office hours. But um, for that same text, born worker, um, it's a plot assignment. Um, so on Wednesday, I'll explain both of those things. Here's the link for those. Um, so yeah, let's talk about the narrative. Uh, yeah, with this checklist, it's just a way to make sure that you got everything you need, you know, before you get to your final copy. Uh, you know, ideally, if you could kind of print this out and go through it, that would be the best thing, but um, you don't have to, you know, it's the same if you have it on your computer. So for the opening paragraph, <clears throat> we're looking for a hook. Um, does it make the reader want to keep reading? Does it grab the reader's attention? And then as you read, um, start reading through the story. Do they use pacing, right? So what that means is that, um, you know, in the exposition, are they just dumping information on you or are they still kind of slowly at least moving through the story while they get those things out of the way? Can you follow the main character through each event? Are events in logical order? Do they unfold naturally? Um, and then they, they, they mentioned plot here and, and just some different things to think about. Um, comments and suggestions. Are the supporting characters developed? Um, think about, you know, we talked about showing the reader things instead of just telling them. So, you know, you, if you're talking about another character, you really shouldn't be able to say, you know, my sister thought blank because you don't know, right? But you can reveal you know, what another character thinks by their dialogue, by their, by their facial expressions. Um, and, you know, you guys, that's a skill that I'm sure you use all the time 
you know, whether it's with friends, family, you know, you can, you're probably at least somewhat able to read people and, and figure out their moods and things based on, based on their actions. So that's kind of what you should be doing when you're, when you're talking about your other characters who are involved in the story. Um, <clears throat> and then suggestions here. Does the dialogue reveal aspects about the characters? Kind of what we just talked about, right? Um, dialogue, I, I think, is really, really important for these narratives, and that's something I'm going to talk about here in a minute. Um, use transition words and phrases to show sequence, show the relationships among experiences or events. So, you know, transition words being things like, uh, you know, later that afternoon, um, because this happened, blank. You know, just things that kind of thread the story together. You know, it does appear a lot at the beginnings of paragraphs when you go from one event to another. Um, descriptive details, I think it's important here. Precise words, that means you're, you're kind of saying exactly what you mean. Sensory language is just, you know, you're describing sight, sound, smells, um, you know, things that you would feel, things like that. Um, did the writer provide a conclusion <clears throat> that reflects on the narr narrated experiences or events? Does it state why the experience is meaningful? Uh, so that's how much your conclusion paragraph. Um, if you have a lesson that you learned as a result of the event, then you're showing that it was meaningful. Especially if you did, you know, like when we filled out that outline, it said you needed a lesson and then a change as a result of it. And if you just, uh, you know, follow those directions on that, then you got that covered. If you learn something from an event and change as a result, that just states that it's important, that that event was important to you. Um, so that's kind of what they mean. And again, a lot of these things, if you, you had followed the directions for each step from the first step, and most of you guys did, and then some of you guys, you know, maybe were, were missing some things at the beginning, but when I mentioned it, you went and corrected them. Uh, if you did that, you shouldn't have too much to do on the revision process. The only thing I would stress is adding dialogue um, when it's other characters, when you're dealing with them. Okay, even if you don't remember, you know, let's say the event was years ago and you don't remember exactly what somebody said, it's okay. Uh, you can paraphrase, you can, you can, you know, write in dialogue that, that to you sounds good for your story to move it forward. Uh, I'm not grading these based on them being 100% accurate, right? I don't know but I just want you to tell a good story. Um, grammatical errors, you know, are there spelling errors, verb tense shifts, like you're switching from like past and present tense, uh, you know, throughout your story. Those things are really confusing. Um, sentence fragments, run on sentences, uh, organization, because, you know, if, if you're kind of leaving, keeping it to your seven events, right, that's, that's really important. Um, does the author exhibit show don't tell, right? Um, if, if it seems like in your text, you're just dumping information, like it was the summer of 2018, then this happened and, and it was sunny outside and the characters were blank. Yeah, I might be a little bit heavy on exposition, right? So try to find ways to move your story forward, which is something, another thing I want to show you here in a minute um, to help you with that. Um, does it use proper word choice? Um, is the word I overused? Uh, that's something that we all do with writing narratives, okay? Evidence of voice. So again, like, you know, your, your kind of personality and things should kind of show through with this. Um, the beginnings of sentence, you want a lot of variety with how you start each sentence. Um, so that is something, that, and then there's no like one thing that I see people using all the time, but it's just something to be thoughtful of. Um, yeah, label any grammatical errors. Um, reading the paper out loud to yourself is really helpful. Um, and then does the author share it really matters? Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to find a balance of, you know, are you, because you got to include information for the reader to understand it, right? but you want to include just enough so that they can get an understanding without, uh, without just dumping facts on them, right? So that's just something to think about. Um, I do want to show you guys something that <clears throat> we looked at in class that kind of came up last minute. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. Um,
until I can find this thing. Yeah, we kind of threw something together in class that I wanted to to share with you guys. And, and I, I'll put this up in the in the folder, you know, if you want to look at it. But um, you know, that might it might be helpful for you. So, you know, just, just talking about how that, that show, show uh, the reader things and not telling them. Um, I just made this document that's an example, right? So what I did was, you know, I just imagined somebody's writing their event one down and, and this is what they came up with. Now, you know, as far as a story plot mountain goes, your event one, it should be the exposition. Um, you know, you got you to gotta do a lot of things. You got to include... The setting, you have to establish the characters that are going to be in your story. You got to establish the point of view, whether it's first person or a third person point of view. And then, um, you know, you got to establish the mood and tone. So a lot of times when we do that, we feel like, oh, we just got to start the, start off with just dumping all this information. Um, you know, then once you do that, then you can then you can get going on your story and start start hitting the ground running. But you can include all that important information in the exposition that you need to include and also kind of slowly move uh move the story forward right so i have two event ones here one of them is where somebody could would just kind of tell things and the other one is some uh, an author showing that these things are happening okay so for the tell it says i i just woke up it was summer it was hot outside the sun was shining brightly um, I was in my house with my parents, <clears throat> and then I left my house and went outside. I was going to play basketball with my friends, Sam and Rob. We were sad that summer was about to be over. You know, they did it. We know the characters, the narrator, Sam, Rob, his parents. We know the setting. It's his house, and then he's outside, and then it, it's summertime. Um, you can tell it's first-person point of view. Uh, the mood kind of seems um, a little relaxed, I would say. Um, no life and death stuff mentioned here. But it does seem like they're just listing, making a list to say, okay, I covered all these things in my exposition. Um, but nothing, I feel like nothing's really happening though, right? They're just establishing things. Um, this next column, the show, they still are able to get all that information out, but they're like really slowly at least because that's as fast as they can go. They are introducing some of this information, which is important, okay? Nothing beats waking up on a summer day, even if it was the hottest summer I can remember. So at least we know like they're waking up and, and starting their day. But in that sentence, they mentioned uh, that they woke up, that it was summer and it was hot. So they got those three things out of the way. I got dressed and walked out of my house, careful not to wake my parents up. So as that part of the plot's moving forward, she's getting dressed and leaving, um, he just drops in his parents, right? So we know now that um, they're they're gonna be characters too. Uh, he just introduced them just like that without saying my parents are characters in my story, right? Uh, we also get a little bit about the setting. He's in his house and then he's leaving. Um, walking through the front door, I saw Sam and Rob with their bikes already waiting for me. I guess uh, I was running late, so. Again, he's talking about how he's leaving, so something's happening. He's going to do something, but in doing that, he drops in those other characters' names uh, so we know that they're involved in the story, too. I grab my bike and basketball and join them for our daily shoot-around. Um, cover this. They're going to play basketball, and again, he did introduce them. Um, even without saying for our daily shoot-around, you know, if he said, I grab my bike and my basketball and join them, you would probably assume that he was playing basketball. So uh, something I would recommend, you know, give your, your reader a little bit of credit to make these inferences on their own without you having to be so specific and spell everything out for them. Because saying things like that, they can get an idea of, of what's going on. Um, then this last one, we were sad that summer was about to be over. Anytime you know, you're describing yours or another character's feelings. It's a really good time to use dialogue, man. Why just tell that, oh, they were sad. Show it. Show it with some dialogue, right? And that's what we kind of have here. You took long enough sleeping beauty. 
We only have two weeks of summer left. We can't waste it waiting around for you, Sam complained. Um, a couple things with that, you know, we get a hint that they're kind of how their relationship is. Maybe they like to tease each other or bust each other's chops a little bit, right? Um, he's saying we got two weeks of summer. We know that now. We can't waste it waiting around for you. You can tell that he's not the happiest about summer coming to a close, right? I wouldn't be either. And that says Sam complained. It didn't say Sam said joyfully or or Sam screamed happily. He complained. He's complaining. He's, he's crying and moaning, right? He's not happy about it. Use your dialogue to show that. Um, <clears throat> let me see. And then one last thing we'll look at together, just some some kind of formatting things with your guys' narratives. Uh, what I did is I just pulled up, I got my intro and then my event one and two, right? Something you guys have to do uh, as far as formatting goes, when you have dialogue, you kind of got to separate it, right? You can't have it just within a paragraph. So even though event one right here is technically one paragraph, um, here's something we have to do. So, so I heard Eli restaurants crib is about to get him up. Good morning, Eli. I exclaimed. So what I have to do, I'm just going to click there and just, there it is. I have to leave that by itself. Okay. What's e good morning, Eli. I exclaimed. And then now that that piece of dialogue is done, Eli's talking now, I got to separate that again. Um, and then when the dialogue's over right here, Good morning, Dad. And we're getting back into the just the, the narration. Um, I got to separate that again. So this looks like one, two, three, four paragraphs, but it's, it's, it's still considered one event and one paragraph, okay? I would do single spaces between these and then double spaces to separate your event paragraphs, all right? Um, and then same thing down here. My phone had been sitting on a chart and I thought to myself, I better go check it. If it's your thoughts and feelings, you can leave them in the paragraph. You don't need to separate those. Um, I'm trying to find where Jackie, okay. I finally called Jack and she did answer. So now I'm talking to her and she's talking to me. So I'm going to separate that dialogue. She shouted frantically. This is another example of showing and not telling because in my draft, I don't want to say Jackie told me Sonny got bit by a dog and she was upset. I'm going to show you that, okay? Sonny got bit by a dog and we're taking him to the hospital, exclamation point, right? She shouted frantically. I didn't say she stated calmly or, she, you know, she, she said happily. No, she shouted frantically. And that's something where you should be able to figure out probably how she was feeling um, based on the actual dialogue, based on that punctuation, the exclamation point, and then based on that speech tag is what that's called. It didn't just say she said, no, she shouted frantically. Um, again, use those things to give the reader an idea about how the characters are feeling. Dialogue, 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 super important, okay? Um, as long as it's moving the story forward and giving us that, that information. Um, so again, it looks a little different now that I separated the dialogue, but that is something that, that we have to do format wise, okay? Um, if you look at any book, any novel, it's, it looks exactly the same, all right? So it's, it's gonna make your paper probably take up some more space, uh, you know, but hey, that's the way it's gotta be. So don't worry about that. Um, yeah, I think you guys are probably good um, to go on that again. Um, I, I, you'll see scheduled meetings and it'll say like drop in only if you got or if you want me to, to revise your paper with you, and please do that, you know, if, if you want that help, or if you want me to look at it as opposed to somebody at home, okay, it's totally fine, because I know exactly what I'm looking for, right, uh, other than that, I think we're good, um, remember that, that those assignments that we're going to start Wednesday are going to be like, a, uh, kind of like tests for me, so we'll review, I'll give you some resources to help you with those, and then uh, that'll be it, but yeah, if you drop in on these Revision meetings, I'll see you there. Um, if not, I'll see you guys Wednesday. Later.